what happens after you meet Christ? Then there's a life to live. Not the television program. <coughs> but a life to live for Christ. And, and uh, I would say to you today, and I try to encourage you if I can, it is a good life living for Jesus. It's a good life. Uh, and it's a wonderful life. It's a very rewarding life. But uh, I'm going I'm to be like Thomas Edison this morning and say this. Opportunities are coming to you, and they're coming to me, they're coming to this church. But let us, by the help and grace of God, recognize them. Because Thomas Edison said this, he said, opportunities come to all of us, but most people miss their opportunity because the opportunities are dressed in overhauls and they look like one. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you what, that has some spiritual significance to what I want to talk about in just a few minutes this morning because they are coming to us, but Paul said that, that a door of utterance was opened to him in the Bible, and he said, but there's many adversaries. And I want to help you today to understand, just for these few minutes, that there are doors that are being opened to you. And listen to me, they are God doors. They are doors that the Father has arranged for you to walk into. I read in my Bible, and I'm sure you could read it in yours, that He is the God that opens doors, yeah. and He's the God that shuts them. And He's the God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. And He's good at that, and He does that on a regular basis. But there's a couple of things I think he would probably encourage us today to know. And I'm not, not going to say I'm not going to be lengthy because it's not necessary at all. And that is that you are, according to the Word of God, kept by the power of God. Yeah. And then also you are hid in Christ. Now I need everyone's attention here as I finish this because I want you to hear this. And I don't want anybody to miss it because I think it would be a help to you and a strength to you. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> and we're going to read a few verses of Scripture. I'd have given the, uh, the folks in the sound booth back there just one verse, but I'll tell you what, we're going to start at verse 1. Can we do that, please? I sure appreciate it, son. we got a family back there today, man. Amen? And we thank God for them. I thank God for what happened uh, Friday night. A young man... Did he give his life to the Lord, or was he asking questions about how to get to Christ? Both. 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 So he gave his life to Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that's what it's all about. And we're very grateful for that. The power of God moved the body. We had a wonderful time around here on Friday night with the young people. We've got a precious group of young people in this church. I want to read from the first verse of the first chapter of 1 Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout all Pontius, Galius, Galius, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the to the uh, foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. This is the verse, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Well, listen to this now. Verse 6 says, Wherein you greatly rejoice that the hand of God is upon you. You greatly rejoice that the power of God is upon you. We greatly rejoice that He's with us. But then He says, Through, though for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise of, of honor of the glory and the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love. 
in whom through now, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How many want some of that today? Amen. I want some of that today. We've got that today by faith. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I want to take just a few minutes talking about these nine verses of Scripture. There's a lot said there because Peter was at the point in his life he was about to give his life for the testimony of Christ. So what he had written here was not just something glibly from the very first of his life because if, if he had written this before Christ died, he probably would have said something else. He probably would have said this trial and me, the trial's going, but I'm out of here. Amen. How many of us have said that? We're in the trial. We said, I can't take this anymore. I can't do this anymore. If this is what Christianity is, I can't take this anymore, and, and I'm just tired. Have you ever uttered words, maybe something like that before? I have. I've uttered those words before, but I found out that if I change my mind in the middle of those thoughts, I can change my life. And if I can change my life in the middle of those thoughts, I can change my future. I found that out. I found out that the way I think about something, the way I perceive something, and the way I continue to think about something can determine whether I fall or whether I rise. So, Peter was uttering these words from a lifetime of walking with God. From a lifetime of living for the glory of God. Whatever time span that was. And so he was uttering these things from wisdom. He was uttering these things from making mistakes, missing it, but also rising up and going after Christ again. I had a good friend that passed away here a while back, and he always would say, keep your eyes on the prize. And I think about that all the time, because every time I've seen it, it's the first thing he'd utter to me. Keep your eyes on the prize, brother. Are your eyes on the prize? He talked about that a lot. And he's in heaven now. But I'll tell you what, his, the words of the Lord through him are still speaking. Keep your eyes on the prize. That's very important in this time that you're in, in temptation. That time you're in, in, in testing and trial that you're in. Testing is not a hard thing to overcome. You just take the word of God, rebuke the devil, and he will flee. You draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. And testing will stop. Will it be back tomorrow? Probably three times worse than it was today. But you do the same thing and you keep walking by faith. You keep living by faith. When you come to Christ, you came to Him by faith. That's how you come to Jesus. Listen, when the devil starts hitting you in your mind and hitting you in your body and hitting you with your kids and hitting you with your family members and everything else and all the situations and stuff around about you, hit the devil with faith again. Faith where? In God. Hit the devil with it. Say, you foul spirit. You foul spirit. You're not going to mess with my mind. My mind's not a garbage dump. It's not a garbage pet. My mind's full of the things of God. My mind is in heavenly places in Christ. Take the word of God and take your faith. And get it out and mess the devil up. You believe you can do that, brother? You see, you're going to have to know you can do that or you won't make it in life as a child of God. I will have to know that can be a part of my life. I won't make it. We cannot let the devil mess around with our minds and mess around with our lives. We've got to take authority in Jesus' name and get over it and get through it. I'm going to give you just a few points today. There's a lot being said here in 1 uh, Peter. But he says, one of the things he said, we're kept by the power of God. And I looked this word up, kept, in the Strong's Concordance and some other uh, books of, uh, that uh, give you some insight on what it means to be kept by the power of God. And this word kept, and it intrigued me because I didn't know all this was about this word. You just think kept is something you put aside and you lay it up in a barn and you lay it in your house and you put it in your car and then you forget where it's at. Kept. Well, that thing's not really kept because it really becomes lost. 
How many put something up that you like and you think, well, I'm going to use that someday, and you put it up someplace and you can't find it and you have to go buy a brand new one? Am I the only one? No. There's stuff I went out and bought, and I said, my God, I need one of them, but I know I got one, and two months later, I said, Holy Spirit, where is that at? And he showed me where it's at, and now I got two of them. We've all done it. But this word here, here is a word that means to be a watcher in advance. A watcher in advance. In other words, I'm living my life, you're living your life for Christ, and you're going through life for the glory of God, and all of a sudden you're hit broadside by something, and your faith gets shook, shaken. And it's like, oh my goodness, you get a telephone call. I got a telephone call the other day about a young lady that I dedicated to the Lord. And she was shot on Cass Avenue. Forty years old. That shakes you. That causes you to think and, and think, oh my God! What's going on? What's going on? I tell you this morning, by the grace of God, God's people need to rise up in faith and believe God and shake the domain of hell in Jesus' name by the faith of the Son of the living God and take authority over this stuff that's going on and apprehend your babies carefully. By faith, don't let the devil have your children. Pray for them. I mean pray for them. Don't just whisper, oh, oh, God, do something for them. I'm talking about every day of every week and get a list out if you have to. Put it on your iPad. Put it on your iPhone. Put it on your phone. Put it on, on everybody else's phone. Pray for them and believe God for them. Because the devil wants to get them and he's a liar. And he's not going to get them and he will not, cannot get them. Hallelujah. Your whole house is going to live for Jesus. Amen. And the glory of God is going to be in your house like never before. Yes. The power of God, people are going to walk up to your front doorstep and they're going to say, my God, what's in that house? <laughs> You're going to love them so much and they're going to say, oh, Jesus is in that house. Amen. How'd you like to have a house like that? Amen. I like him kind of house as well. Jesus said, where the peace of God is in that house, let your peace mix with that peace and you'll have the power of God. Mm, glory to God. I'm believing that for all of our young people, man. The power of God's going to get them, hallelujah, one of these nights in youth group, and they're going to lay up on this floor and go, oh, glory to God. They're going to be just like us, man. A little bit messed up. But you know we're not in this world. We're not of this world, but we're in this world. As long as we're passing through this garbage pail, we're going to make the garbage smell good <laughs> by the grace of God. This word kept means that we are victorious in advance. How many of you are ready to go through a trial and the trial does not go through you? How many are ready to pass the test and go to the next level with the Lord? Yeah. How, many are, how many are tired of, of yesterday things trying to apprehend you and bring, your, bring it into your reality? How many are tired? You're done with that. You're done with that. So this word kept means a watcher in advance. That means God and all of His hosts and all of the blessings of the Lord are trying to follow you all the days of your life and you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I wish I could talk about the benefits of God, how He keeps you in the middle of the trial. How He blesses you in the middle of the trial. It also means a watcher in advance, but it also means movement and the guard at their place. The guard at their place. It also means to protect, to keep with a garrison. And a garrison, I found out, is a troop. A fortified place which always brings results. Whew. You like to have a troop with you? Say, I'm going in here to the devil's den, man, and I need a troop with me. I'm going to take all the angelic hosts with me. Amen. I'm going to take God, Father, God, Son, God, the Holy Ghost. I'm taking them with me, and I'm going in there, and we're going to get it done in the name of Jesus. Did you know that the host of heaven has already went before you? Before you get there. 
The Lord wants to bring you and I to the place where the trial does not get us. But we're able to go through the trial and we're able to rest in the middle of the trial. Amen. Amen. In the middle of the bad news. In the middle of the situation. In the middle of the concern. In the middle of the pain. In the middle of the hurt. God Himself wants you to be able to go through it and the problem will not bother you. There remains a rest to the people of God. The Lord is advancing upon your life and He's swiftly bringing you and I into that place where we can rest no matter what the condition is. It's imperative that you come to this place real quick because the devil's working overtime right now. In our society, the death of that young lady shook me this week. It shook me so hard. She was one of the babies in the church that we first founded down in the inner city. And I'm still having repercussions about it. what in the world is going on when the devil can snatch our babies before they're finished. No, 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 no! No, devil! You're not going to get them! That's what rolls up on the inside of me. No, devil! You're not going to get them, you lying, foul spirit. You're not going to get them. <laughs> dedicated to the Lord. Amen? Amen? So this word kept is a very powerful word. It means that God's actively involved in working in your life and our lives as God's people to keep us from the power of the devil. Not after the fact, but before the fact. And then I got to looking at another word, and I'm going to give you five points here in just a minute. How can I have victory in my life at all times, Pastor? I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some keys. You say, preacher, you have victory at all times. I have victory at all times, and then I have victory at all times again. Because by the grace of God, I've learned through the Word of God is my answer. I've learned to change my mind in the middle of the pain. I've learned to change my focus in the middle of the problem by the grace of God. I'm not saying this because I'm anybody, because I'm nobody. I'm about this tall. Can you measure that? Sissy, can you measure We're nothing without him. But I can stand on the Word of God and be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I can look at my babies. I remember my mom many times. She would pray for us. We didn't have the money to go to the doctor every time we turn around. We didn't have all this care that we have today. Thank God for it. You know what my mama had? She had faith in God. She had faith to believe God. She had faith to trust God. She had faith to pray. And she prayed. And all of us, all of us turned out alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. We turned out okay. In spite of what some of the neighbors said, don't go down to the Kessel's house, man, there's problems down there. The youngest of ten, my, my baby sister, my sister here, she's she's uh she's prettier than I am, but she's a little bit older than I am. <laughs> we better talk later, sis, okay? <laughs> She knows what I'm talking about. But we know what it means to be kept by the power of God. We know what it means to be kept by prayer. Kept by a woman that said, Devil, you're not going to have my babies. A mama that walked through the house and left knee prints in the floor where she prayed and said, You're not going to have my babies. You're not going to destroy my family and my children. And you're not going to destroy what it is that you've got designed for them. Devil, get out of my house. If you was not living right, you would not want to come to my mother's house because you would get under heavy conviction before you even touch the Gordon. You could get drunk and sober up before you got to the parking lot. Because the power of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the love of God was so resident in that area where she believed God. I'm here today because of a mom that my mom was kept up. Let me give you this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. And, oh, I've got to go. It's, it's it. I'm going to give it to you quick. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Let's use verse 3. Have we got it on the screen? Here it is. Verse 3. For you are...
are dead. Somebody say I'm dead. I, I didn't know what to do. We're just all laid out and die right now. Okay, let's just do it. Let's be quiet. You're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. You're dead. You say, I don't feel dead. Sometimes I do, preacher. Sometimes I don't. Well, be sure that you're dead before you can live, okay? What that means is, be sure that your life is all about Christ. Because that's the key. That is the key. Make sure your life, not just a mental ascent, but a heart ascent, ascent, that you are heavily in pursuit of God. Devil! No matter what you say, what you do, I will pursue the Lord today. Amen. I will bless the Lord today. I will honor the Lord today. And I will magnify the Lord on this very day. So, your life is hid, and the word hid there means that you are covered <coughs> Covered, somebody say covered. covered. In every manner of life, you are covered. No matter what's happening in your life, by the grace of God and the faith of God and the mercy of God and what Jesus paid for on Calvary's cross, you are covered. It's covered. How would you like to have that kind of coverage in your bank and that kind of coverage with your insurance company when your insurance company says your roof just flew off but you're not insured? Would you like to have that kind of coverage on all your tires on your car? Amen. Would you like to have that kind of coverage? Some of you may have, but listen, the coverage of the Lord is way beyond that. Hey, he's with you. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. No matter where I go, he's there. Now let me give you five quick points here because I'm going to close right now. Well, after five points, okay. <laughs> Here's number one. Here's number one. This is, it. this is crucial. If I'm going to have the victory, and if I'm going to live in victory in my life, and if I'm going to live my life in a way that's going to not just be pleasing to the Lord, because a lot of people get hung up with the fact, I'm not pleasing to the Lord because you have measured your pleasing God by your own standard. I remember when I first got saved, I was so hung up, hung up on sanctimoniousness. <coughs> I was so hung up, if I didn't do these five things, then I wasn't pleasing to God, and therefore I'm miserable. I had a holier than thou spirit. Can you believe me? I had a holier than thou. Me? 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 Judgmental spirit? All of that. How come you ain't living holy? I'm miserable. See, that's judgment. The Lord sets us free from that kind of stuff. First thing that you will learn to do as you keep your faith in the Lord and keep your faith in God's Word and learn how to walk in the Word. The first thing is, do not be distracted by the what if. In other words, don't be distracted by what somebody says or doesn't say or might should say. Don't be distracted about what somebody should do. In your mind, they should do, but they're not doing, and that distracts you. You see, the devil wants to magnify the problem to such a degree that you cannot see the provision. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to make the problem look so insurmountable that you cannot see that God is with you at all times and He's for you at all times and He's ahead of you at all times and He's there for you at all times. The devil does not want you to see that. It's real simple. Do not be distracted by the what ifs. <clears throat> for instance, <clears throat> why does I pray? Why doesn't so and so come and pray with me? Talk about things that happen in the church. I'm going to church. How come nobody else wants to come to church? Well, what's wrong with those people? It's not your problem or my problem if somebody's not in church or, or not, not in church or in church. It makes no difference. You've got to learn to let people go and leave them in the hands of God. 
preacher said. And then that becomes insurmountable in your mind. And it becomes your whole life that you're thinking about. I don't like that preacher. That preacher. Preacher. The preacher is the reason why I can't live for God. My life is the reason I can't live for God. My husband, he's the one. The people I work with, brother, you just don't know there's some evil people. My God, wake up, church. They're everywhere. Just be a light in the middle of the darkness and love those people. And show them Jesus. That's why you're here. I don't, you know, I remember when I was working full time in places and they'd hang up these pornography pictures. In the, in the guard shack and in the places where you go to eat your lunch and all that stuff. And, and I walk in there and go, oh my God, I ain't looking at that stuff in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and everybody on the job site, I'm talking about where hundreds of people are. And he's, he's stuck up. He's that preacher. I mean, out of 500 people, they say, watch the preacher. Everybody knew me. Because I didn't go in the guard shack with them and have lunch with them and listen to all their filthy and dirty jokes and look at all the stuff that was around me. My God, in the name of Jesus, you got to shake that stuff off. Yeah. Every once in a while, somebody gets saved on the job. And they come to Jesus. I remember a Nazarene boy one time and He's, uh, he's uh, struggling with conviction. I've been ministering to him. And I said, my goodness, you're close, son. They hit right with God, but he came, went out and hung out with the buddies again on the job. Day after day after day after day. And I said, Holy Ghost, get him. <laughs> get him. <laughs> Allie and a poor one day was standing on rebar. And uh, you know the story. But, and uh, he gives his life to Jesus while we're pouring a big old batch of concrete at Rockport Park Lane. Bows his knee right on the rebar about this big around 35, 40 feet deep pouring concrete. I said, my God, what do you want me to do? He said, what do you think you ought to do? I said, are you kidding me? Jesus, I've been working on you nine months. <laughs> Gave his life to Jesus right on the rebar. The boy became a preacher. He's preaching to this day. Amen. I lost my job. <laughs> You heard the story. But I got called back on the same job site the night I gave my, my letter in and my voice into the VA and I said, hey, I lost my job. And he said, uh, okay. Our labor called me back and said, we need a person up there at Rockport. Go right back up there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the way it's ended up. You're kept by the power of God. Yeah. But you've got to learn how to, to bypass the what ifs in your life. How come my husband won't live for God? You've got to leave that to God. How come my, my wife won't live for God? How come my babies don't, don't show me respect? You've got to leave all that to God. I'm not just preaching to one person here. I'm preaching to the whole congregation because every one of us go through that kind of stuff. Every one of us in this room. Since see, we've been talking about it. Every one of us, I hear it day after day after day. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard it in the last two weeks. You just don't know what I'm going through, preacher. Nope. And I don't want to know. But I'll try to give you the answer. The what is in your mind, you've got to buy that. Well, what am I going to do if I don't have this job? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to believe the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And you're going to believe he owns the hills too. And he owns everything that's on the hills. And you've got to believe that and trust in that. That sure God's going to supply your needs. That's what you're going to do as a child of God. That's what I would encourage you to do. Believe God. Because what? You're kept by the power of God in advance. You know there's more fighting for you than you, you realize? Did you know that? Your life is hid in Christ and in God. When your life is hid in Christ, you'll be able to come to this place. Number two, you'll determine in your mind, I will go on in faith. You'll change your mind, you'll change your life, you'll change your future. Number three, you'll allow the Holy Spirit to be your most clearest voice that you know. Clearest voice that you know. 
You've got to pursue this. It's necessary that you pursue this, children of God, please. You've got to pursue this. You've got to make Christ like, a, like this great big giant magnet that you're constantly drawn to Christ. I'm not talking about drawn to the benefits of Christ. That's all wonderful. And I love that. I love that when God will take somebody like this young man right here and he gets to pray for somebody and God blesses them and moves through them. That's powerful to them are benefits. Yeah. I'm talking about keeping your eyes on the prize and keeping your eyes on what Jesus did for you and watching the things fall off and watching the things happen for you that only God can do. Yes. This may be the last sermon I ever preached. You never know. What are you going to do then? I'll tell you what you're going to do. God will send you somebody else and they're going to preach just like me. Amen. They're going to fire you up and love you. But don't forget me. I'll be in heaven. I'll see you. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the most clearest voice in your life. Yeah. All the other clutter that you hear, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to go do this, and i got to do this, and i got to do that, and I think I'll go over here. And all the time, the Holy Spirit's saying, don't go over there. Don't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. And we bypass that. And what happens every time? We get in trouble. Yeah. Amen. Every time. The Lord will put up roadblocks, detours. You're about to do something you shouldn't be doing it. All kinds of things. Cops. <laughs> Tail lights out. You think it's the other thing you're about to do. I've been needing to move on. So number four, give all to the Lord. Do all things through Christ that strengthens. And number five, let me finish with this. Do not allow the past memories determine your reality. Things of the past, as a child of God, when you've surrendered your life to Jesus, will constantly bombard you, especially when you become a brand new Christian. Your past will bombard you to go back, to go back, to go this way or that way. And Satan will do everything he can to get you back in the realm where you used to be, and even worse. You have to stay in this book and not just read it, but blast it. Blast it. Put it right in his face. If he reminds you uh, of your past, you remind the devil of his future. Say, are you you a you a you a preacher that thumps the Bible and pushes the Bible on people? No way. You gotta want this. If you don't want this, then I can't help you get it. I, I won't even try to but uh, you know put a spoon to your face and try to get you to get it. And I'm gonna tell you something. If you want it, the devil's gonna get messed up. Mm -hmm. If you want it, yes, yeah, my wife. I, I mess the devil up in dreams sometimes. I wake up in the morning shouting hallelujah and the devil's been on my back in a dream. And I'll shout hallelujah and you foul spirit out of that corner over there. Get out of there in Jesus' name. You say you have a rest and mess in your house. I'll be in every time in Jesus' name. Now today, be encouraged. Don't let the what is spot you. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Learn how to handle the Word of God. It will discern, listen, it will discern everything that's going on in your life ahead of time if you'll take the time to stop and listen to the Spirit of God. I've had wrestling matches in my mind so many times where the devil says, you do this, you do that, and, and everything happening, and you get phone calls and all this other stuff. Just all comes. Somebody said, when it rains, it pours. You ever had a rainy, boring day? At thousands of them. Here's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am in to be content. Amen. Now listen, if that was not able to happen for the child of God in this dispensation of time, it would not have been written in the name of God. He said, I've learned it. It's not overnight. It's not overnight. I can tell you story after story, up-to-date stories. I can't, I don't have time. But I can tell you this one thing. God, keep you. Yeah. He'll keep you. 
It hurts. You say, preacher, it hurts. You don't know the pain. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts so bad. I, it just, it's torment. It's confusion. It's pain that I can't describe to you. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. We've been blessed here this morning. But when you leave here today, be encouraged and be strengthened with the power of His might. I would to God I can give you all of what the Holy Spirit gave me to speak to you today, but I think this is enough. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Stay in the school. Because this, this is what's going to keep you. It's right here. Stay in strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Do not let the what ifs distract you. Do not let the past determine the future. Some of you are getting ready to leave where you are in your spirituality and your walk with God. But you first must determine where you'd rather be. I'm not talking about a geographical place. Don't you dare leave this church premature. It's not an awful place. I'm talking about your spirituality. You'll never leave where you are until you decide where you're going to be. Right. As for me and my house, I've decided to believe God in the middle of the jump. <laughs> Everything I believe about God is by faith. I believe in His revelation of Himself by faith. He said you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Believe that by faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can. Yes. <laughs> you get me preaching again, you keep saying Amen. <laughs> It's so good. You're an awesome yeah. group of people. The plans the Lord has for you are astronomical. They're big. Opportunities are about to knock on your door. If you can get past the what ifs. If you can get past the past. You can get past the pain of yesterday and listen for the voice of today. Do not allow your yesterday come into your present to define present. That's only you can do that. I wish I could wave a wand up here and go, poof, you got it. Poof, you got it. Oh, the left side, poof, you got it. Boy, I can't do that. Every one of us has got to work out our own salvation with fear and trouble. Yeah. Every one of us. That means I've got to find a quiet place during my whole week to say, Jesus, I love you just the same as I love you in church. I love you. Help me today. Teach me. He will. He'll do it. Hallelujah. Stand up with me this morning. We're not going to have any music right now. Listen, you was going to sing a special, but I think you already did, didn't you, sister? You already did. It was a special on a special. Amen? Amen. Love you, sister. I want to pray for you this morning, and I want to encourage you. Uh, but before I do that, I want, to, I want to ask, is there anybody in this room right now, right here, right now, it says, Preacher, I'm not sure I got the victory. I'm not sure. And I want to make sure before I leave this room. I'll take authority over that foul spirit. I'll take authority over it. I'll do it. That little girl, my sister and I both knew her very well, and all the whole family for years. It should be this week in such a way that it's owned by God. I met a guy at the muffler shop yesterday. I had to get a muffler fixed. First thing he started talking about is eternity. I didn't do it. He looked at me and he goes, you're a preacher, ain't you? I said, uh, I have a couple days. <laughs> and he started telling me about when he was a little, little boy. He says, he said, I don't need to talk to you, preacher, because this has been on my heart for a long time and I haven't been able to talk to anybody about it. His daddy built a great big bins for pigs, for hogs. He was a farmer's boy. He started crying. He said one day that he went in there to kind of scoop the babies of the mama pig, the sow, they call them the sow, into the corner so he could get in and clean up the mess and debris in there. And that sow thought that he was trying to harm the little piglets. And he said, I was 15 years old. And, uh, he said, before I knew it, I stumbled over a bunch of straw that had gathered up. He 
said the wind had caught it or something. He said it just, he stumbled over and that sow came over to him and put its hoofs. You know, a sow, they could get 700, 800 pounds. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And that sow had already had its two front hooves on that little boy. And he said he couldn't even say anything. He said he watched the nose of that sow get ready to grunt into his body. Let me tell you something, a sow, have you ever been around homes? Buddy, they will tear you to pieces. Yes, they will. Especially a sow. Mama baked mama. And his daddy, I want you to hear this before we finish, but his daddy heard that sow squalling and carrying on, ran into the barn and took that, an axe and hit that sow. But don't you start feeling sorry for the sow, okay? Don't do it. And he hit that sow right square between the eyes. Well, they had pig for the rest of the year is all I can tell you. <laughs> but he, that little boy, he said, my daddy loved God. He heard the cry, my cry, to hear the cry of that yeah. sow. And he knew something was wrong. I'm asking you today, if you think there's something wrong in your life, oh. let your daddy... Touch your life today. Let him speak to your life today. And let him bust that sow up in the name of Jesus. Yes, and get that mess gone. Jesus. Say, preacher, I want to know today that I've got the victory. You didn't, maybe, maybe you didn't even get prayer today. And you want prayer right now. We're just going to have prayer. Jesus. Tonight we're going to have prayer. We're going to have prayer right now. Anybody in this room, has everybody got the victory? Everybody got the victory? Let me pray for you right now. Father, yes. these are the sheep of your pasture. These are your precious people. Jesus. Yes, Lord. This is your church. These are people that you have hand-picked and hand-selected to come to you. I bind every spirit and every foul spirit in the name of Jesus that would want to chew us up. You foul devil and you, you lion devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You will not and you cannot destroy these precious lives. You've been found out and you're defeated, devil. And Father God, we thank you for your loving hand and your goodness and your mercy upon each and every one of us. We thank you for your provision and we thank you, Lord, that we're kept in advance. Lord, that we're kept in advance. Oh God, as we keep your word and hang your word up on our hearts, no foul spirit will destroy us. We have power over all the power of the enemy. We're kept by the power of God. We thank you for that, Lord. I pray the victory will be recognized and revealed to each and every life in this room in a very real and tangible way as they go out through their work week. When the problems come, they will rise up and say no. And they'll say yes to the provision and the advanced power of God in their life. Bless the Lord and strengthen them. Keep them in their coming in and their going out. All that they set their hand to, make it to prosper. May your face shine upon them. May your grace be abundant in their lives. Until we meet again, in the name of Jesus we pray and believe. Amen. God richly bless you and strengthen you in the name of the Lord this Wednesday night.